Good morning, church. Good morning. It is Mother's Day. If everybody will go ahead and just take a stand, find a mother in the room and tell her happy Mother's Day. Aren't y'all glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? I didn't hear you, church. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Father, we just want to say thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to come into this house and praise you. We love you, Lord, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Are y'all ready to worship church?
Amen. Down 
somebody like me how about you amen good time to look at somebody and say hey everything's going to be all right just look up and tell everything's going to be all right amen before you're seated join me in prayer very quick we have an emergency situation in the foyer Bria's mom uh, has passed out and we've got paramedics coming we got doctor we got nurses and all out there right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you. We just talked about the miracle worker, the great healer, the way maker, light in the darkness, so that's you, oh God. So we pray right now in Jesus' name for Nancy. By your stripes, we might not possibly be healed. By your stripes, we are healed in Jesus' name. Beth just got through giving us a word, Father. Everything is going to be all right in Nancy's life, not for the glory of this church or for the glory of man, but for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, we call it done. And everybody in unity said together, 
amen and amen. God bless you as you're being seated. All right, that kind of threw me off there a little bit. Now, as soon as I make these announcements very quickly, uh, Nancy Grubbs, somebody help me get Nancy Grubbs. I need Nancy's help. Uh, is she behind me? All right, Nancy. I uh, want to welcome our guest. All right, very quickly, welcome our honored guest today. You have a card there on the seat back in front of you. Be so kind as to fill that out. It says connect with us, and you can text Welcome FC 84576. We need your information. We send out texts and emails on a weekly basis, letting you know all the exciting news of everything that's taking place and happening at Family Cathedral Church. So be sure and fill that out. If you're not getting a text and an email on a weekly basis, you need to go ahead and fill that out. I don't care if you've been coming to this church for years. That's why you're not finding out what's going on. It's a new day. Social media is the way we connect. So give us your uh, information there on that connect card. We appreciate that so very, very much. Let's give our honored guests. we got some guests. Give them a good hand here today, church. Come on. Thank you, honored guests. Also, uh, if you are a mom, go to the information table right out those doors, right in the dead center, and you can see Nancy or Kay and the ladies' ministry. We have a sewing ministry here at the church. you got a beautiful, it's called a mug rug and homemade cookies. It don't get no better than that. Linda Butron, did you make all those cookies? Give that girl a good hand right there, man. <laughs> Linda, you are not helping me out. I cheated and had just had one. All right. Okay. I need Arlene and Debbie and Stephanie. Well, Stephanie's out in the foyer. I think she's a nurse, my daughter. But Debbie, if you'll come on here. And uh, as they're coming, Pastor Jeremy, I've had, uh, come help me out here. I've had eight to ten people ask me what's going on next Sunday, and I don't want to talk about myself and Debbie on her. You're going to dress it when you get up here. Okay. All right. But I didn't want to talk about myself in that arena. Amen. All right, Nancy, come on here and tell us what we got going on here this morning. Okay, we just want our first lady. Yes, sir. We just want our first lady, Debbie Sewell, to know how much we love and appreciate her for all that she does for our ladies' ministry and everything else for supporting pastor and all the ministries of the church. These are for you. I know they're heavy, so I'm going to set them back in the green room. But we love you very much, and we appreciate you. And now, to my right, Miss Arlene, these are for you. Miss Arlene is going to be 97 years young next month. Isn't that awesome? We are so blessed to have her in our church, and she is such an inspiration to me, and I know as well to all of us. We love you and appreciate you so much. You're such a blessing to us, and it just makes me smile every time I see you walk through those doors. And I pray that God will continue to bless you and keep you. And thank you to Dwayne and his family for bringing her and for being such a great support to you. We love you, Sister Arlene. Bless you. Y'all are a blessing to me, too. I love coming here. I know all of you care about people, and I, I love this church. This church loves you. Okay, is Stephanie in here? Stephanie's out there. It's okay. She's out there with uh, Bria's mom. Okay. All right. Haven't said it in a while. Everybody shout out happy, cheerful, willing. You know what that means? It's an opportunity to give not to a church, not to a man, not to a ministry, but to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So we appreciate you so very much. More blessed to give than this receive. Word's very clear. Bring the tithe in the storehouse and see if I'll not open the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing upon your life that you'll not be able to take to handle. Amen in Jesus' name. Came too long. 
people just like you have helped us make it 55 plus years to God be the glory and thank you so very very much for your financial support God's blessed us every way possible in almost 56 years now to God be the glory Father we love you this morning you are so good to us none like thee in all the earth whose name is high and to be lifted up praised worshiped and adored you are the king of kings you are the lord of lords we ask one more time that you bless our gifts and our givers of the gifts honor the gifts honor the givers of the gifts father this, this leadership ask of you for one more sunday don't you give us man's wisdom give us divine wisdom from above as we are the stewards or the finances of this great church and we will continue to give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen, amen. Bless you as you give. Four ways you can give. Then there's online giving right there. If they'll put that back up there, I'd appreciate that. 972-441-7476. In-house, you can just bring it up here and dropping it into the containers. Amen. Heather, are our new members here today? think they're here? All right, come on. Yeah, do it. Okay, well then you hold those while I get these names. New folks just joined the church. Mark Houston. Jody, the whole family. There you go, Jeremy. Jody Houston, Katie Houston. Come on up here and get your membership certificates. Come on, church. Amen and amen. Church, we can do better than that. This is like being born into the family. This is our spiritual family. Give them a good hand. Come on, church. Give them a good hand here this morning. Bless you. We love you guys. Amen. Love you. Amen. Also, real quick, Pastor Jeremy, Aunt Norma Sue is here this morning and got her kids, Gerald and Mercy. You just have to know who Aunt Norma Sue is. That's her first time to be. We've been with us like 40 years. First time here in Forney. Get your hands together for Aunt Norma Sue and Gerald and Mercy. All right, thank you, buddy. Hey, come on, church. You know I'm big on honor. This is the man of God right here bringing good news this morning. Get your hands together. Welcome our very own Pastor Jeremy Souter. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. You can be seated. You can be seated. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, man, it's been awesome uh, services the last few weeks, and I want to continue uh, with what God's laid on my heart. Uh, I'm going to talk about Father's Day stuff today on Mother's Day. Um, just kidding. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm glad somebody agreed. No. Um, but Mother's Day, the third largest card-giving day in America, Whew. behind Father's Day. No, I'm just kidding. Behind, <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know, I, I forgot what the other two were, but I do remember one of them was Valentine's. So I mean like two of the top three are about women, right? <laughs> Man, some of y'all get the same card every year and you don't even know it. Second, <laughs> it's the second largest gift-giving day behind what? My birthday, that's right. No, Christmas, behind Christmas. Christmas is the busiest, obviously, the most. So uh, having said that, if you are a mom or a great-grandma or a grandma or a great-great-great-grandma, some of you are great-great-great moms, but what I'm talking about, if you're one of those people would you just stand up for me real quick? If you're a mom, if you're following any, stand up for me. Come on. Stand up. Yes. Everybody give them a hand. Hey, if it wasn't for them, you wouldn't be sitting here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything that you do. I want to honor two people today. One of them is my mom, and I want to say thank you, mom, for everything that you taught me. You taught me to put my underwear on the right way, wear clean underwear, wear put deodorant on, all that stuff. No, thank you for all the godly stuff that you taught me. Uh, my mom's a rock and uh, has taught me a lot. Uh, so where's Kevin at? Kevin, come here. Mom, come here. I got you some flowers. Got 
got her some flowers here. Actually, they're not flowers. They're roses. But for Mother's Day, I love you and thank, thank you, you thank for you. everything. Where's my wife? Heather, come here. Come here, honey. Grab that microphone over there when you come up. Now. Come on. Y'all know how? It's not even on? Press that button for me, Kevin. So I want to honor my wife. Uh, this year we'll be married a long time. And uh, <laughs> how many years? It'll be 23, right? No, 24. Excuse me. It's 2022. I'm still thinking 20. 20 you see that look? That, I get that often. Uh, 24 years this November we'll have been married. And uh, it's, it's wild and been a wild, crazy roller coaster, but it has been an awesome ride. Uh, and I want to honor you uh, on Mother's Day. And you're the best mom my boys could ever ask for. They're not even here. And they're not even here. That's how good they are. Um, so it's going to be a great day because she's not going to have to get on to them. No, but I just want to honor you with uh, some roses as well. And then I asked my wife last week to just share something real quick. You know, she doesn't, uh, she doesn't share a whole lot except for at home. And so I asked her to share some stuff. Uh, just share real quick. Greet the people. Tell them, tell them uh, whatever you want to tell them. Go for it. Happy Mother's Day. Um, yes, he always does this to me, and he puts me on the spot because he knows I can't say no in front of all of you guys. So I'm here. Um, one thing I wanted to do was honor my mom. She is actually not here. She would have been here had my brother not come in town. <laughs> but they went back to our old church that they attend, and my brother and his wife and family are here. So they're not with us today, but my mom is a rock, and my mom is the epitome of the most amazing person I've ever met. And I know a lot of y'all know part of our story, but I actually have two siblings now that have passed away. So not, no parent should ever have to bury their child. And my mom has had to bury a two-year-old and a 50-year-old this year, this past November. And I look at her every day and I just, I just am in awe of the amazing strength that she holds with just 100% grace. And so, Mom, I know you'll watch this later. I love you. I honor you. I hope to be as amazing as you are one day. And um, so thank you for being the best mom. And, of course, my dad's a part of that, too. Um, and then my sweet mother-in-law. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. It's a, it's a kind of a funny story. Real quick, when we started dating, I always prayed for a godly husband. <laughs> oh, shut up. I always prayed for a godly husband, and the Lord knew exactly. In the we we when we met and we started dating, we never looked back. And I lived in Waco; he lived here. And I would come in town, and I went over to their house for Sunday lunches all the time. Back in the good old days, where we always cooked at home. And when I drank Suzanne's sweet tea, I said, "I can marry this man." <laughs> Because her sweet tea is as good as my mama's. So I knew right away, and I met my amazing sister-in-laws. And just immediately, the cousins, everybody, I mean, y'all know the Soul Clan, they just embrace me, and I appreciate you guys so much. And it's just, it's been an amazing ride. So we've been married 24, but how long have we been together? See, I think it, you got to go all the way back to the beginning. It's not just married. <laughs> See, I had to turn my mic back on since 95. Yeah, so that'd be 20, so, this, long time. This June, July will be 29 years. So I love you. Thank you for honoring me. And yes, our boys are playing in the basketball championship right now, or the little one is. So that's why they're not here. <laughs> you can take that mic with you and say all kinds of amens. Um, happy Mother's Day to my sister Beth. Uh, she's awesome. She's an awesome mom as well. She's a great wife, great mother. And uh, I honor you as well. You're awesome. Uh, that was my little sister that got up uh, and shared. So, I mean, she kind of, she's got the, the gift of speaking as well. But um, I, I want to I just real quick give you seven ways to honor your mother. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3 says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. See, we're all children. You're never, it, you're never not a, ch a child. As long as your mother and father are still living, you're still a child. And then more importantly, you're still a child of God. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise, 
so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. The reason that your life will be longer if you obey your parents or if you don't obey your parents, the reason it will be cut short is because your parents will kill you. Thank you. They'll kill you if you're not obeying. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Y'all better not be doing that. I mean, I know sometimes you get to that point, right? Um, but yeah, honor your parents. I'm going to live a long life because I honored my mother and father and obeyed them. I'm glad y'all believe that. I was a good kid. No. Honor kids, adults. Always honor and obey your parents. Always It's the first and greatest commandment with a promise, with a promise. The question I want to ask every parent is this, are are you the kind of daughter you would like to raise? Are you the kind of son that you would like to raise? How do we honor our mother? And the first point I had is this, the first way we do that is we love our mother. In, In marriage, it's commanded that the husband love the wife and the wife respect the husband. Women want love. That's the number one need in a woman is love. And the same with a mother. We need to love your mother no matter what. The way that you honor your mother is to love her. Through the good times, through the bad times. Love her when he when she has love her whenever she has so much to give you. And then love her when she doesn't have anything to give you. You see, my kids love us, but they really love us whenever we give them things, right? But what about whenever I can't give them anything or when my wife can't give them anything? Will they still love us? They better or I'll kill them as we go back to (laughs) point number one. The second thing we need to do is we need to hug our mom. You need to hug her. It's important. It's that affection. Women look for that. It's important to hug your mom. There's a bumper sticker y'all have all seen that, that says something like, have you hugged your kid today? Anybody ever seen those? I I think I may go do this to my kid. I'm going to go find a bumper sticker that says, hug your mom. And put it on my kid's bumper sticker. Maybe not even on the bumper, but like on the window. So as soon as he gets in the car, he sees that. And put one of those like police ones on there that you can't peel off. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all ain't supposed to know what that's about. Come on, man. Leaving your car in places that they're not supposed to be. See, I had a friend back in the day I'll never forget. We were all hanging out at his house, and like his mom said something, and he smarted off. Anybody ever done that? And I said a friend. I didn't say me. Kind of like asking for a friend, you know. And my friend smarted off to my mom, or off. <laughs> my friend. <laughs> this isn't me. My friend smarted off to his mom, and out of nowhere, like I don't even like. I don't even know that the dad wasn't even in the room. Like, I didn't even remember seeing him. And he's a pretty, rather large guy. Out of nowhere, I see this hand come flying in front of me and knocks this dude across the room. And I'm like, yes, Jesus. <laughs> knocked that kid across the room. And that made an impression on me. Again, that was not me. I promise you, it wasn't me. I asked him, telling the story about my friend. That kid went flying across the kitchen table, leaning up against the window, and that was the last time that that kid ever did something like that. I'm not saying, dads, go home and just smack your kid across the face if they do that. For different people, it works differently. For my kids, I mean, that'd be the nice way to do it. So (laughs) I'll never forget, I threw my son up against the shed one time uh, for mess. He didn't, it, it wasn't with Heather. He didn't say anything to Heather, but he did something to uh, his little brother. And I grabbed him and threw him up against that shed, and he still does the same thing to Logan till this day. I, I guess it wasn't hard enough. <laughs> Don't disrespect your mom, or else that hand is going to come flying in there. The third thing we need to do is we need to understand her. See, women go through a lot of changes. Right, Heather? Women go through a lot of changes. She's in the back. See, I can say that right now. She's not down here. Mothers go through a lot of changes. They wear a lot of different hats. Their moms, their wife, their referee, their judge, their jury, their executioner. They're all that stuff. They have all these hats that they wear. And we need to understand that. See, sometimes we go, sometimes we go to our, we go to our mom, man. I mean, like, 
When you need somebody to talk to, who you go to? Yeah, go to mama. You don't go to dad. Dad's like, hey, I'm watching TV. So we need to understand them. We need to have something in our heart that is so accommodating and so sympathetic and not just treat ugly after you've gotten everything that you can. See, our parents give us so much, even as we get older, but yet sometimes we'll still treat them ugly. Right? No, we don't. The fourth thing we need to do is we need to listen to her. Men, we need to listen to our wives. Men, we need to listen to our mothers. Husbands, <laughs> husbands want undivided attention. Agreed? I know there's times in my life I want undivided attention from Heather. I want, like, all three of our dogs to go away, the kids to go away, so I can have her undivided attention. Children, when there's something wrong, they want undivided attention from their mother. I love that story. There's a story in the Old Testament in 2 Kings. It says the child grew up, and one day he went out to his father, who was with the reapers. He said to his father, my head, my head, it's hurting. His father told the servant, carry him to his mother. Carry him to his mother. When there's a problem, who do the kids go to? Mama. They go to mama. My, my son's 19 years old in college, and whenever he has a problem, who's he call? Mama. Midnight. Hey, mom, I need some money. Can you put money in my account? No, they go to their mother, and they continue to go to their mother. There's a story whenever this is about me. Um, and it's talking about dads because my son, my youngest one, he's like broken bones a lot. Like, like I don't understand. He needs more milk, and he won't drink it. But he's playing football in a scrimmage game. Scrimmage. <laughs> scrimmage. And we're playing this other team, and he comes off the, he comes coming off the field, and he's kind of like this. <laughs> Heather, you remember this, right? Uh, oh, I remember this. And I think they're getting, it's either a close game or it, you're getting beat. But it's a scrimmage. I mean, Iverson, we're talking about practice, y'all. It's a scrimmage, Jeremy. And Heather's like, go check on him. And I'm like, all right. So I walk over all the way around. What's wrong? He's like, my arm hurts. As he's leaning like this, and I'm like, well, like your team needs you. Like y'all are about to get beat. Your team needs you. You need to get back in there, and you need to, you need to hit somebody. And I'm like, I mean, like, can you, can you do this? He's like, yeah, but it hurts. Scrimmage. And I'm like, you need to get back in there, dude. Right? True story, right? Chris was there. Hudson was there. Atlanta and my wife were there. So what's he do? He's like, coach, put me in. Put me in. And he goes back out there, and Chris, Chris is like, I think you need to go take him to the doctor and get him x-rayed. And I'm like, ah, oh, he's all right. But that's how men are. We're like, hey, just rub some dirt on it. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you, Kirk. <laughs> just rub some dirt on it. Bone hanging all out. You'll be all right. I'm ne- hey, true story, I'll never forget. Eighth grade, I'm playing basketball. Dove for a ball on a carpet floor. I get up. We didn't get the ball. And I get up, and I'm going back down the court, and I'm just kind of, you know, doing this bit. Coach calls timeout. We call timeout. We come over there, and he's like, Jeremy, you all right? And I'm like, yeah, I'm all right. And he's like, no, no, look at your hand. And I went, ooh. And my finger had popped out a joint and was laying like this way across my pinky. And I'm like, ooh. <laughs> Didn't even know I was hurt. But then whenever he pointed it out to me, then what did my dad do? My dad hops down off the st- uh, out of the stands. He's like, let me see it. And I'm like, it hurt, it hurt, Daddy. Oh, okay. He put it back in place. He's like, hey, y'all got any tape? Tape it up. He'll be all right. He tapes it up, and I'm like, all right, let's go. I can't even dribble the basketball with my right hand. We go to the hospital that night, and I broke three fingers. So I learned how to play basketball left-handed. Put some tape and some dirt on (laughs) But dads, man, we're like, just rub some dirt on it. You'll be all right. But moms are concerned. Someone said when you're old enough to know the answers, nobody asks you the question. Like, I'm 47. I know a little bit about stuff. But, like, sometimes there's, like, 20-year-olds that have kids, and they're like, okay, so we're going to drop our kid off with you while we go to the movie. So, like, you need to change his diaper whenever he uses the bathroom. And here's the bottle in case he does get hungry. You know, he's, he is a newborn. He will cry. 
And yeah, we just like to pick them up after they eat, and we kind of like pat them on the back because, you know, they got a burp. I know what I'm doing. Heather, will you take the baby? And <laughs> But ask an adult. They know things. They know things. They've been through some stuff. Raising a baby, taking care of a baby hadn't changed too much. They eat, sleep, and poop. That's it. And cry. I didn't. But the older people get, the wiser they get. Now, there's some people that you aren't wise. That's why they're not asking you, because you really don't know what you're doing. Don't go around thinking, come ask me. Nope, I know what kind of person you are. No. The fifth thing we need to do is we need to help them. We need to help them, and not just help our mom, but we need to help them cheerfully. Like, be excited when they ask you to come climb on their roof to hang lights. Ugh. I don't do that. I did hang some like, lights on the siding with my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law does a lot. I honor him today. <laughs> Thank God for Rick. Rick does a lot. I love me some Rick. <laughs> Mothers are the greatest helpers in the world. Moms, it doesn't matter if it's your kid or not. I've got like eight moms here today. Like, y'all are just moms to me because y'all have always been there for me. And you help. Like, I was raised by like the whole church whenever I grew up. Like, everybody beat me. If I got in trouble by my house, like when I came to church, I heard what you did, boy. Pow! I'm going to take my belt off and I'm going to whip you too. But moms are great helpers. Moms just want to help everybody. Amen? Moms, is that true? Okay, five of you. I'm glad to know that. <laughs> the sixth thing, I'm running out of time. The sixth thing is this. We need to remember our moms. We need to remember our moms. And not just on Mother's Day. And not just on their birthdays. Some of you don't even know when your mom's birthday is. Thank God for your siblings so they can tell you when your mother's birthday is. Little things to mom mean a lot. The little things to mom, just calling and asking, what are you doing? How are you? What's going on? I don't go, well, you want to go shopping? You, you want to come over? We just need to do the little things, kids, children. Remember them. The seventh thing, and Ben, you can go ahead and come on up as this. The seventh thing we need to do is we need to, we need to remind our moms how much they're needed. We need to remind them how much that they're needing. See, it hurts a mom to feel like she's no longer needed. And the enemy will use that to creep into your mom's mind to make them think they're not needed anymore. And when that starts to play in their mind, then they start thinking they're useless. And like, well, they don't need me anymore. They're grown up. They're adults. They don't need me anymore. But we always need to remind them how much they mean to us. And when the enemy comes into their lives, moms, y'all need to remind Satan that he's a lie. Satan, you a lie. I am needed. My kids still need me. Hello? I want to close with this story, and this is a true story. Not about me, because it happened in 1820. There was a man by the name of Peter Richley. And Peter Richley, Pastor Doug, you know this story? No, okay. Pastor Doug knows like all these stories, man. He knows all the stories. There's a man named Peter Richley in 1820, and he was trying to sail from England to Australia to go see his mom, who he hadn't seen. And as he's on this ship, the ship sinks. And this is a true story. You can look it up. As he's on this ship, this ship sinks. And as the ship sinks, Peter Richley is still alive and he's hanging on for dear life on his, you know, I'll never let go, Jack. I'll never let go on his little life preserver. And another ship comes along and picks up Peter Richley. He's on that second ship and gets that second ship's going through some storms and that ship sinks. Peter Richley is rescued by a third ship. And that third ship picks him up, and that third ship is heading to its destination. And as that third ship is on its destination, that ship sinks as well. Fourth ship comes along. Maybe I know where I'm going with this. Fourth ship comes along. 
They rescue him. They rescue the people. They get on the new boat, the fourth boat. That fourth boat's heading along to Australia. Guess what happens to that fourth boat? That fourth boat sinks. The fifth, fifth ship comes by and picks them up. At this point in time, as Peter's telling the story, I'd be like, hey, bro. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> You've been on five, four ships and all of them have sunk? Yeah, sorry. We well, can wait for the next one. Fifth ship picks them up. Guess what happens to the fifth ship? That fifth ship sinks as well. The fifth ship sinks, and then along comes the sixth ship. And the sixth ship picks up Peter Richley. And the, the sixth ship was named the Leeds, the, you know, USS Leeds, whatever it was, L-E-E-D-S. And so they pick up this Peter Richley guy, and he's telling his story, and they're about to throw him overboard. No. They're telling him, he's telling the story, and they're like, man, I'm glad we're able to help you. We are going where you need to go. But we want to ask you this one thing. Will you go down? There's this woman on this ship, and this woman on this ship is so sick. Not seasick, but she's sick. Like, she's dying. She won't eat. She's got a real bad fever. She's got the chills. She's going in and out of a comatose condition. But when she's awake, she's praying. And she's praying that she'll see her son one day. And she wants to see her son. And she, oh God, if it's the last thing that I do, I pray that you let me see my son. And they're like, he, she knows everybody on this ship, but she doesn't know you. So would you like go down there and just pretend to be her son? She's not going to know whether if it's, your, if it's actually her son or not. So would you do us a favor? And like, he's like, yeah, absolutely, man. Y'all saved my life. Like, this is the sixth time somebody saved my life. Yeah, I'll go down there and I'll do that. And as they're showing him where to go, and as Peter Richley walks in and opens up the door, Peter Richley looked at this frail old woman, and he just started beginning to, he began to weep. And as he began to weep, he heard this woman crying out to God, oh, God, just please. Please let me see my son one more time. I haven't seen my son in 10 years. It's been 10 years since I've seen my son. And the captain looks over at, the, at Peter and was like, Peter, why, like, why are you crying? And he said, that's my mom. That's my mom. I've been trying to get to see my mom, and my mom's been trying to get to see me. And that's my mom right there on that deathbed. That's my mom dying. And see, I believe that there's power in prayer. And Pastor Harry mentioned this about my memo and how my memo he remembers praying for or with his ki or her kids and remembers my papa praying for. But see, I believe there's power in prayer. And there's power in a praying mama. There's power in a praying daddy. And I believe that those other ships sank because that mama was praying that she'd see her son. Because see, if he was been on that other ship, they would have crossed paths and they'd have never seen each other. But the power of a praying mama allowed her to see her son again. Never underestimate the power of prayer. I can't think of anything better than giving your mother on Mother's Day, and that's the gift of salvation. Everybody stand real quick for me. The greatest way, kids, we can honor our parents is to give our life to Christ. See, the only way if you've lost your mother, the only way you're going to see your mom again if you're not a believer, and she was a believer, is if you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I just want you to lift your hand up for me real quick. Anybody here? Anybody here? Amen. Okay. There's power in prayer. And guys, I can't tell you. My sister came up here and said that people going through stuff. But what you need to know is people are going through stuff with you that have overcome that. And they overcame that through prayer. I've had multiple people in the last six weeks tell me about things that I've been praying with them about. They've come down here for special prayer. 
And they said, you know what? It's been five weeks since I've dealt with that. It's been one week since I've dealt with that. It's been six weeks since we prayed and I hadn't had that feeling anymore in six weeks. You need that encouragement. How many of you are going through something right now? Raise your hand. I know our eyes are open and everybody sees it. That's what it's about. Amen. There's lots of us going through stuff. You need that encouragement from somebody else that was going through something that has made it through it. And they're going to continue making it through it because of a power of a praying mother and a power of a praying church. See, the church is a bride. In essence, we're a female. The church needs to be a praying church. Amen. And God's doing things in this church through prayer. Through each and every person here. It's not Pastor Harry. It's not Pastor Jeremy, Pastor Doug, Pastor Drew, Pastor. It's none of us. It's not the worship team. It's you. You are the church. You are a child of God and you are a child of your mother. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day. God, I thank you for this wonderful church. God, I pray for these people going through things in their life right now that raise their hand up. God, I don't need to know what the situation is, what the, 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 the storm is that they're going through. All I need to know is that you see them through it. All I know is you're there for them. Whatever sickness, whatever battle, whatever depression, whatever it is, God, you know what the need is and you know what the outcome is. We just need to walk in that faith. We need to walk in the faith of knowing that we're getting through this situation and we're getting through this storm, that we see the light at the end of the tunnel because that light cannot be put away because that light is you. God, I thank you for this church and I thank you for what you're doing in the lives of everybody here. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can be seated. I do want to close with this. Next Sunday will be a little bit different. I'll be speaking in the first service at 9 o'clock, and then the second service, we're going to honor Pastor Harry and Debbie for their 50th wedding anniversary. Amen? Amen. So, yes, 50 years. That's a long time that Aunt Debbie had to put up with Uncle Harry. Okay, good. <laughs> Amen. So next week, we're going to kind of do things a little different in second service. You'll want to be here. We're going to have like a little reception afterwards. We're going to have cake, punch, uh, finger, grazing table, Char charcuterie board, charcuterie, grazing table. So you can like graze, not like cows, use your hands. But we're just going to have stuff afterwards. But during the service, it's going to kind of be set up a little bit different. Myself and Heather are going to bring Pastor Harry and Debbie up, and we're going to talk about just marriage. 50 years of marriage. I think we can learn from that. Amen? Okay. So the eight of you that want to learn from 50 years of marriage, y'all be here next week. The rest of you, that's fine. You keep doing the same thing over and over, you're going to get the same results. You've got... mm -hmm. Yes. Tell them what not to do. Okay. <laughs> no, what not to do. So it's going to be fun. We're, it's going to be a laid back atmosphere, uh, asking them questions, just back and forth. I'll, we can learn from that, guys. 50 years of marriage, and I can't think of a better way to do that than on a Sunday, honoring these great men and women of God. Amen? Amen. We, we got an offering container over here, and we got, <laughs> make sure I wouldn't, but we've got an offering container. Bill's going to bring one up here. You going to be in the back, Bill? So we've got offering containers for our building fund. The parking lot is like $29,000. Little by little, we're tackling that and getting it taken care of. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for everything that you're doing uh, for this great, wonderful church. So I'm going to pray, and if you have your building fund, you can bring it down or you can put it in the mailboxes behind us. You know the four ways you can give. You can do that as well. And don't forget, moms, on your way out, stop by the table and get your uh, coffee mug rug. Did I say that right? Mug rug and cookies. Make sure you get them, all the moms, make sure you get them. Also, the photo booth is set up. Go take a picture. I mean, some of you don't ever take a picture with your mama. Go take your picture with your mama right now after church is over. And like, I don't need to see a fight break out, so let's all like make a line and 
get in there. Don't, you know, nobody's mom's more important than the other. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day and I thank you for this wonderful time that we're able to honor our moms, all these moms in this house. I thank you for godly women. God, I thank you for a godly mother that I had to raise me 47 years of my life and continuing to raise me and lead me in the right direction. I thank you for my, my, uh, my wife, Heather. I thank you for everything that she does for our boys and for me. Couldn't ask for a better wife, Father. Just bless the gift and bless the giver in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you as you go. We'll see you this Wednesday or next Sunday. Amen. Amen. Oh